I wonder how you would feel this morning if I told you all to belt up. Well, I hope you won't be too offended, because that's exactly what I need to do. Stand, therefore, says Paul, having fastened on the belt of truth. Truth itself is a fascinating concept. According to the, the Chambers Dictionary, truth means faithfulness, constancy, veracity, agreement with reality, that which is true or according to the facts of the case. One of my favourite programmes on TV is Would I Lie to You, where uh, celebrity panels of players take turns to tell anecdotes about themselves. And the other side has to guess whether they're lying or telling the truth. It all works out fairly well, unless one of the panellists is Bob Mortimer. <laughs> his, his true stories, his true stories, are so embellished um, that they are completely indistinguishable from fiction. Um, but it all makes for hilarious viewing. And there's a, there's a similar programme on the radio with... with the great title of The Unbelievable Truth, where panellists have to smuggle surprising truths past their hearers in the midst of a lecture made up of lies. And both these programmes are highly entertaining. Of course, the, the truth in them doesn't really matter. It's pretty trivial in the overall scheme of things. But the Bible tells us that holding to the truth is not a game. It's a very serious matter. Um, we heard last week about the battle that we're in. Life as a Christian is no picnic and the battle is no laughing matter. If we're Christians then we have a real enemy and he's one that fights dirty. We're not to live in fear of him because Christ has already won the decisive victory against him. But we are to recognise his attacks and be ready for them. When he causes us to doubt or tempts us to sin, when he stirs up opposition from within or confusion and dissension among God's people, and all the more so when God's kingdom is advancing, when God is about to do great things in our lives, we especially see the devil's attacks. We need to recognise that we're in a spiritual battle. Earthly strength, earthly weapons will not do. If we rely on them, we're already defeated. But we need to rely on the Lord's strength and the armour he provides if we're going to see victory in our lives. If we do that, we'll be enabled to stand our ground, even in the evil day, in the time of particular crisis, and after we've done everything to stand. So I want to look um, more closely at the, at the armour God provides. And firstly, I want to look at the necessity of the truth, secondly, at the authority of the truth, and then finally, um, and very briefly, at the victory of the truth. So firstly, the necessity of the truth. Paul tells us twice to put on the full armour of God, the armour God provides. And the first item he mentions is the belt of truth. Ephesians 6 verse 14 Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. But what is this belt? Well, in the first century, men wore long flowing garments. To try and run or fight in them would be impossible. They would be tripping over themselves and feeling insecure on their feet. So they were equipped with a belt to hitch up and bind together their clothing to prepare themselves for action. For this reason, fastening the belt gave them a sense of strength and confidence as they prepared to fight. In today's terms, imagine having to fight off a burglar in loose-fitting pyjamas and a dressing gown. It would be hard to fight if your trousers kept falling down. Well, what's more, um, several scholars say that with Roman armour, the belt held the other items of armour securely in place. So that's the first thing. We need to be ready for action, ready for battle, prepared to engage in combat. 
As Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 12, verse 35, stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. Be ready for action. But why the belt of truth? And why does this item come first before all the others? Well, I think we need to recognise that our enemy is a deceiver. In John 8, verse 44, Jesus says that the devil was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. The devil is out to deceive us, to confuse us, to undermine our grasp of truth. By contrast, in John 8, verse 31, Jesus said, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. One of the, it seems to me one of the, the devil's greatest successes in the last century is to undermine the concept of truth itself. In recent years, our society has become very cynical about truth. We're so used to seeing truth bent or massaged by politicians, journalists and advertising that we no longer know if any, anyone can be trusted. Like Pontius Pilate, we're tempted to shrug our shoulders and ask, what is truth? In, in a pluralist society, we're generally content to live by our own private truths, but we become weary of seeking for solid, objective truth out there, which is real for all of us. You hold my truth, and you hold your truth, and I'll hold to my truth, we're sometimes told. That may be true for you, but it's not for me. But the fact is that none of us can live like that. Every time we cross the road, we put our trust in objective reality. Truth exists, and it's tremendously important. And as Christians, we've come to know the reality and value of truth. As Christians, we've, we've formed solid convictions about the truth of Christ based on the word of God. And we need to hold on to these in the heat of battle. When we do, we'll be enabled to stand firm against all the lies that the devil throws at us. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. So... Is Paul just speaking here about our own truthfulness, our own sincerity or faithfulness? Well, if our doctrine is true, then hopefully we will be true also. As, as one great writer says, one will not do without the other. Certainly God requires truth in our inward being. And we need to be truthful and honest as Christians. If we... If we start dealing in lies, we will, in, we will inevitably fall into the devil's trap. Because he's the master of lies. Don't go there. But, as I understand it, every piece of armour here is, is something given to us by God. If we have to depend on our own faithfulness and sincerity in the battle, then it seems to me we would soon be defeated. Yes, absolutely, right doctrine sh must lead to right character, attitudes and behaviour. But it seems clear that tr truth here means a knowledge and belief of the gospel truth, which every soldier of Christ must have and hold on to, even at the most simple level. Even if it's simply, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We need to be confident in the truth. To face the enemy filled with confusion, doubt and unbelief is to court disaster. If I, I've, I'm going to paraphrase this because it's in old-fashioned language. Um, but if I can paraphrase one great old theologian, Charles Hodge. As the belt gives strength and freedom of action, so the truth, when spiritually understood and believed, gives confidence. Nobody should think they're prepared to stand against the assaults of the power of darkness if their mind is stored with their own theories or the speculations of men. 
Nothing but the truth of God, clearly understood and wholeheartedly embraced, will enable them to keep their feet for a moment before these evil powers. Our own reason, tradition, speculations or dead orthodoxy are like a girdle of spider's webs. They give way at the first onset. Truth alone, firmly held onto, can give strength or confidence in the struggles of Christian life, let alone in any really evil day. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. Um, or as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Or Peter in 1 Peter 1 verse 13, therefore preparing your minds for action, and literally it says, girding up the loins of your mind for action, which bubbles the mind a bit, but anyway, um, and and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As Martin Lloyd-Jones says, truth is the first thing we put on. And that means nothing less than that we should know whom we have believed and we should know what we have believed. It's the, the truth of the gospel that really matters here. The truth which we find in the Bible. Later in this passage it speaks of the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And that I believe is speaking of specific verses wielded as an offensive weapon to counter the devil's attack. But here we're speaking more generally of our grasp of gospel truth which is foundational to our armour and our defence. And you know, uh, a belt is no use to us hanging in a wardrobe. We have to put it on. That's why it's good to study the Bible regularly and prayerfully. We want to be equipped with truth to put it into action in our lives. Of course, that's why Satan tries so hard to distract us. He tries to, to stop us spending time in the Word. Or even if we do spend time in the Word, um, he can distract us in other ways. One writer, Ian Dugard, says, we sometimes turn our study of the Bible into an academic exercise rather than to equip our souls for combat. At other times, we recognise how a Bible passage applies to other people while completely missing what it says to us. Yeah? You, you, um, you recognise that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, The Bible equips us with truth to answer Satan's lies and stand firm against his schemes. But we need to make use of it daily to strengthen us against his wiles and ploys. John Bunyan famously said, Sin will keep you from this book, or this book will keep you from sin. So if I can say it politely again, belt up. The, the belt of truth is essential if we're to stand against the devil's attacks. So that's the necessity of the truth. Secondly, the authority of the truth. The belt of truth surely signifies confidence in the truth of scripture, which is foundational for everything else. Jesus tells us that God's word is truth. John 17 verse 17, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. We need God's word to sanctify us, to, to help us to grow in, in holiness, to become more Christ-like. I guess that's why Satan spends so much time seeking to undermine and disparage the truth of the Bible. Again, remember that the devil is a liar and the father of lies. And the only way to combat lies is with the truth. One word of truth outweighs the whole word, world, said Alexander Solzhenitsyn. I'll say that again. Alexander Solzhenitsyn. <laughs> um, 
And how much more so in a spiritual realm? The word of God stands firm against all the threats, all the lies of the devil, and puts them to shame. Remember how Jesus withstood the devil in the desert when he was being tempted. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. It is written in the Greek, gegraptai. It stands written. And as he says elsewhere in John 10 verse 35, scripture cannot be broken. As James Montgomery Boyce says, no Christian should ever fear to stand upon the word of God. At, the, at different times there will be different theories which challenge it and the worldly wise may mock but the word of God stands firm and immovable. As C.H. Spurgeon famously said, defend the Bible, I'd as soon defend a lion. Or in the words of Psalm 119, verse 89, your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. I remember one Sunday morning listening to the radio and a liberal vicar said that we need a new Bible for the 21st century. He wanted a new collection of writings that reflect modern thinking. Well, that evening we were preaching through Malachi and God's word spoke to us so powerfully it was as if it, as if it had to have been written freshly for us as a congregation that very day. <coughs> the fact is we already have a Bible for the 21st century. It's the same one which God has used so powerfully throughout the ages. And God still speaks through his word to us today. But it's not just verses here and there which matter, but the whole message of salvation. In, in Ephesians 1 verse 13, Paul calls the gospel message of salvation the word of truth. And later in Ephesians 4 verse 21, he contrasts the lifestyle of this world with the truth which is in Jesus. You know, people often say, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. Supposedly, we're all basically approaching the same reality from different sides. Taking different paths up the side of the mountain. Have you heard that one? But if there's a, a real God who's made everything and has a purpose in human history, then it really does matter what you believe about him. C.S. Lewis said, Christianity, is, if false, is of no importance, and if true, of infinite importance. The one thing it cannot be is moderately important. The Bible tells us clearly that it really does matter what we believe. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. As Peter said in Acts 4, verse 12, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. You know, um, you could dabble with all kinds of, of religious, spiritual ideas. But we're told here, no, we need the truth. We need the gospel truth. Knowing the truth is vital. There are so many people going through life sincerely believing the wrong answers about who God is and what he wants from us. But God has given us the answers. One writer, uh, again, Ian Duguid, uh, gives an example. He's a professor. Uh, he said if he gives his students a book with all the answers and tells them to revise it for the coming exam, they would be very foolish to ignore it and just make up their own answers. Well, as, as John Wesley said, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven, how to land safe on that happy shore. God himself has condescended to teach the, the way. For this end, he came from heaven. He has written it down in a book. Give me that book at any price. Give me the book of God. In the Bible, we have access to the truth. And we need to make use of it. 
We need to have a grasp of the big picture and have confidence in God's truth. That's why we started this church 30 years ago by all studying the book Know the Truth by Bruce Milne. We have a copy of the Nicene Creed hanging in our foyer and we've often said it together during our early morning communions. And next week at our covenant service we'll be affirming our statement of faith together. These things aren't inspired as Satan is but they are a helpful summary of Bible truth. So these things are not inspired as scripture is, but they are a helpful summary of Bible truth, which we need to hold together. We need to develop firm convictions based on the word of God, and we need to grow strong in our relationship with the one we find revealed there, if we want to stand firm and win the victory in the battle. In this world, the truth of Christ will always be under attack, but we need to hold firm to it. Truth matters, and we need to be ready to take our stand upon it. So again, all I can say is belt up. We need to know the truth, as Ephesians 4 verse 14 says, so that we may be no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, in deceitful schemes. It really is important that we learn to know the truth. And then lastly, and very briefly, the victory of truth. The belt of truth will enable us to stand firm against the devil's attacks. You see, but I think it's encouraging to note that the armour we need is God's armour, which Jesus has already worn in our place. Um, when he speaks about the belt of truth, Paul's language clearly alludes to the Septuagint, the ancient Greek translation of Isaiah 11, verses 4 to 5, which says of the Messiah, With righteousness shall he be girded around his waist, and with truth bound around his sides. The Bible spoke of a coming king who would be marked by righteousness and truth. In Jesus Christ, God himself has entered the battle on our behalf and he's won the decisive victory. Remember how Christ withstood um, the devil's temptations in the desert and how he walked the path of righteousness all the way to the cross. Jesus Christ is faithful and true. He has won the decisive victory. And the armour which he wore into battle is now available to us in our spiritual warfare. So once again, let's be ready to belt up. Let's place our confidence in God's truth and be ready to take our stand on it, whatever lies the devil tries to throw at us. As one of our songs says, I was lied to, but you told the truth, because you are the truth. Alleluia. You are the one for me. Ultimately, Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life. Let's be ready to take our stand for him at all times. In Jesus' name, amen.